Ready. Hi everyone, Alex Ranieri here, Program Co-Director with Healthy Democracy. And hey, Flynn Davis, Program Co-Director with Healthy Democracy. <laughs> we are coming <laughs> back to you to re-record a section of our June 4th session of the Petaluma Fairgrounds Advisory Panel. Unfortunately, the live stream cut in and out a little bit, so we want to make sure that the recording of this presentation, um, which will be important for panelists, especially moving forward, is accessible and available. So panelists, hello. Thanks for watching to members of the public. Um, this is the presentation we gave on June 4th, a couple of weeks ago to panelists introducing their first primary report, which is on principles that should guide decision-making about the future of the fairgrounds. So thanks for tuning in. We'll dive into the presentation that we gave to panelists. So, um, we're shifting gears slightly from the content of the panel's work on its first session, May 13th through 15th, and starting to think about the first report that the panel will deliver um, in, in June or July. Um, so after all of the panel's information gathering efforts, your information gathering efforts, this will be kind of the first opportunity to really deliberate about your opinions about this topic and, and start to make some decisions with your fellow panelists. Um, so principles and options are a couple concept, concepts we need to tease out in order to begin to think about that report. Actually, I'm gonna walk back a little bit here and just point out where this fits into the process overall. So as we pointed out a couple of weeks ago, um, sessions one, two, and three all have some information gathering components. And then where we are right now is this overlap section between information gathering, where panelists are still hearing from presenters, absorbing a lot of information about the topic, and also starting to get into this more um, deliberative phase around values and principles. So just to note that graphically as well, that's where we are in the process. So principles and options. I'm gonna give a couple examples of, of uh, decisions where we might use these two concepts. So example one is getting a dog. I recently got a dog a few months ago, rescue. So this is, uh, this is my example, near and dear to my heart. And um, these are some examples of principles that might have guided my decision. Um, but to think about principles, we might say, I care about X, Y, and Z, getting a dog that, one, will be very receptive to training, two, that I can take on long hikes, love to hike in Oregon. Three, that might help get rid of the rodents in my yard. Maybe I want a dog that hunts, um, likes to cuddle on the couch. I love a snuggly dog that won't make my allergies worse. Got enough allergies these days in Oregon as it is and has a chance of winning the ugly dog contest, which I've uh, just found out or just learned in Petaluma is a uh, it's a fantastic event that I hope to attend someday on a dog that, uh, that has a chance. <laughs> so those are principles. Those are kind of values that I might take into account in making a decision. And then th these are examples of options, right? So breeds. So this is kind of a one-dimensional decision. Obviously, there are many other layers of options I might think of in addition to breeds like age, um, you know, whether or not to get a rescue or from a breeder. Um, but just to keep this example simple, we're going to talk about one layer of options. So a pit bull, option number one. Border collie, option number two. Look at that cute face. And a Mexican hairless. Look at that very cute face. <laughs> and this is how we might move from principles to options in decision making. This is really familiar. Probably all of us do this to some extent. We take our values into account as we consider many different options that are available to us. So a pit bull can definitely take on long hike, hikes. Um, might be, you know, might be good at hunting. The rodents in my yard uh, will probably like to cuddle on the couch. Not always, but probably. 
uh, and won't make my allergies worse. You can go down the list for the others. A border collie, much more receptive to training, also can take on the hikes, likes to cuddle, but ultimately that's three of the four options. So the pit bull's still looking pretty good. Uh, the Mexican hairless, probably a cuddler, um, also definitely won't make my allergies worse and is the only one that has a chance, I think, of winning the ugly dog contest. So maybe I wait that more, but if we're going numerically, um, the pit bull is probably, probably gonna win. Um, and I love pit bulls, so this is a very self-serving example. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think a key, a key piece to highlight here is that, is that each option satisfied many different principles. And vice versa, a principle might um, might satisfy or might be satisfied by by several different options. So we can kind of go back and forth, but this this is the first step at teasing out what are the values guiding a decision and what are the actual decisions or components of a decision being made. All right, over to you, Lynn. All right, so I'm going to do an example from my life fairly recently moving into a new home. And so this is about finding a new place to live. And, um, and in this one, we're going to look at sort of the next level of complication. And this will be more similar to what you all are dealing with, although still certainly very simplified, of course. Um, so on the left here, we've got a number of principles, and these are brainstormed, as you will do, um, without judgment. Just let's get everything on the table. What are all the potential principles in that should be considered? Um, and these all kind of start with, I would really like to find a home blank. The sort of why, what's important to me, basically. And on the right-hand side here, we have a bunch of brainstormed options. Again, at first, laid out without judgment. Let's get all the options on the table. Um, ones that I might like, ones that I might not like. Let's just get them out there. And so these are, you know, uh, uh, things that a home might might be, might be in the city or in the country, etc. So on the left here, we've got, for example, principles like. Uh, I'd really like a home where my kids can go to a large public school or where my kids can easily get out into nature or uh, uh, a home that's quiet and surrounded by open space or that's in a bustling neighborhood full of activities or that doesn't uh, require my family to drain our savings. And right away, let me acknowledge that some of these, as you can see, are either di directly contradictory or sort of contradictory. They might be at odds with each other. And that's a-okay and that's absolutely gonna happen, absolutely gonna happen in your process as well, where um, folks will be putting all, again, without judgment, all the potential principles on the table. Um, you can see on the options side, obviously that's true as well. Uh, a, a house or a home cannot be both an apartment and a remote cabin in the woods, probably. Um, get all the options out on the table, and then we'll start uh, sort of evaluating uh, the principles and then later on evaluating the options. So uh, let's take the next step here. What's gonna happen in your process once you've got all the principles out on the table there is to start to prioritize. In this case, you can see that the principles have shifted around in order because they've gotten different numbers of votes. Now, this is sort of imagining that all of us, all, all of us in this room uh, on, on the panel and staff are all together making this decision about the one home that we're all going to move into. That's sort of the, imagine that as the scenario here. Um, and, uh, and let's say there were 20 votes among the group um, that said that this was a really important principle to uh, not require uh, our family, our collective family to, to drain our savings, maybe 14 votes, the bustling neighborhood, 14 votes, getting out, kids getting out in nature, nine votes, the quiet and open space, and six votes, kids going to a large public school. Now, we start to be able to match some of these up with options. So let's take that first principle. The first principle might point us toward 
an apartment, or it could point us toward a remote cabin in the woods. Maybe both of those are, are more affordable options. Um, and it might point us toward a smaller place. Um, now, whether it points us toward the city or the country, maybe that one doesn't really point us either way there, potentially. Let's take the next one. So the next one here, a bustling neighborhood, that might point us toward the city. Maybe that uh, is sort of, that's, that's kind of the option that that one is really tied to. Next. The next option here, kids getting out into nature. Well, that might point us toward the country uh, and also this remote cabin in the woods, which, you know, sounds, sounds great. Uh, and as you can see here, we're starting to, um, as Alex did in her example, line principles up, attach them to different options. And as she pointed out just now, you can see that a single principle might point to multiple different options. Um, and a single option might um, be justified sort of by more than one principle. Um, but you can start to see here, oh, okay, there's some, we're working our way through this, through this sort of prioritized list of principles, and we're getting to some of the options that might be more preferable than others. Maybe we're looking at a smaller place, one to two bedrooms. Maybe we're looking at an apartment or this remote cabin, but maybe, maybe not a house be, uh, because of affordability and that's not satisfying some other things. Next. So now to take the next step forward, and this you won't be doing for a little while, but just to give the full picture of how this is gonna kind of play out so you can kind of see the, how this is gonna progress. What's gonna happen then is you're gonna start putting options together, bundling options into what is an actual proposal. And you're gonna be creating multiple different proposals. So in this case, one proposal might be, how about an apartment in the city, but that's next to a park. Okay, so that's, that's maybe good for, you know, a, a less expensive option that's maybe satisfies principle number one, maybe satisfies principle number two, it's a little bit of bustling neighborhood, maybe it satisfies principle number five, and maybe it, it sort of partially satisfies principle number three here, kids getting out in nature, okay, it's just a park, but maybe we're, you know, it's a little bit of a compromise there. Next. Another option might be a cabin on some land outside of town, but that's not very far outside of town. So you can see again here, that satisfies a number of options and maybe that's a little bit of a nod toward um, option number two, even though it's, it's, not, it's not marked there. Um, so anyway, so that's how had sort of the next step to put these options together. And you can see immediately how these principles are gonna be really, really helpful in doing that um, to helping to, to identify sort of what's most important and therefore, um, you know, where you're going to spend your energy to put to put options together to create these sort of these sort of proposals that are going to be the strongest and have the most support from from the panel. Next. So just as a review here, principles are these sort of values or criteria that guide decision making and options are the actual components of a decision that might meet one or more principle. And one way that you can tell them apart is that often if you're looking at a, a, a statement and you're trying to decide whether it's a principle or an option, maybe ask yourself, does this answer a question about why? Why is this important? And if you can still answer a question about why it's important, then maybe it's an option. And actually the answer to the question why is the principle. Um, and just as an example from the previous from that previous example, maybe you're like, ah, oh, cabin in the woods. Cabin in the woods sounds pretty great. Uh, but, but if you ask yourself why, or why does it sound great? Ah, now the answer to that question is gonna be some principles. Um, all right, next. So just to throw up here, and you're gonna get these in paper form, but these are a couple examples. I forget if we have one or two examples of a previous process uh, where the panel put together principles. Um, this one is from an assembly uh, uh, that we did in 2020 on uh, COVID recovery, very optimistic uh, in Oregon. And the panel put together a, a number of principles. Next, I think we zoom in a little bit here. Yes, um, around 
um, what decision makers should consider um, in, in making decisions related to COVID recovery. So for example, the first one here is organs response should be guided by the best available science and research. The second one is every person has a right to safe, clean, livable housing. You can see these are sort of overarching kind of, kind of concepts, uh, um, values that the panel thought were uh, most important. Next. So this is going to be the activity we're going to do uh, next time uh, we see each other um, just as a sort of refresher to think of a decision that you've made recently and list some principles and list some options. Okay. All right. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And we'll see you. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Thanks.